You up for a road trip to go see a really big machine shop? A couple of weeks ago, my son and I went on an overnight camping trip with the Boy Scouts on the USS New Jersey, the big battleship. Um, really, really cool time we had. It's one of those things where it's it's a lot cooler than it sounds. I mean, granted, going on a battleship sounds like a lot of fun, but when you get there, you have no idea what you're in store for. The sheer size of this ship is just incredible. The, the, the amount of metal and how heavy things are, it's so hard to wrap your brain around all of that, you know, water displacement, it floats kind of stuff. It's in Camden. Uh, basically right across the, the river uh, from Philadelphia. So we went over there with the Boy Scouts. We did the overnight camping trip and it was an incredible, incredible experience. It really makes me lament the fact that I didn't join the Navy, to be honest with you. I always wanted to and for one, blah, one reason or the other, I, I never did, but such a, such a cool, cool time and, and a cool thing to visit. Uh, I took a lot of video, kind of did it a little haphazard because I, I, I didn't know I'd be making a video and, and honestly, you know, I just had my iPhone and I did a lot of walk around footage with it so it wasn't, you know, properly filmed but I did try to put together something nice for everybody to take a look at and I figured it would be an appropriate thing to show because, you know, who doesn't love battleships? If you're into machining and stuff, that kind of goes hand in hand. I did get a lot of good, um, footage of the machine shop for everybody. Probably two-thirds pictures, one-third video of the machine shop itself. I got video of the whole ship. So if you like battleship footage and you like seeing machine shops uh, on a battleship, sit back and I think you'll enjoy the show. We drove down on a Friday night and we parked the car and walked up to the ship and this is what we saw. And I think the American flag blowing around in the wind was a, was a cool shot. It's really hard to describe the size of this ship. It's just massive. Now what you see here is the Delaware River from the New Jersey side. And this city you're seeing is Philadelphia. So we started the night off by taking a commemorative photo. That's Basement Shop Junior and me. And there he is getting set up with his buddies for a night of keeping all the adults up. So these were supposed to be my sleeping quarters. But when it came time to go to bed, all the scouts were wired. They were making way too much noise, and the area was right next to a heater, so it was really hot. So walking around, I found a section of unused cots. It was dead quiet, and I slept like a baby. Win for the adults. So the night typically begins with a nighttime tour for everybody who goes on the ship. Um, and I started to talk with the, the tour guide, and I asked him about the machine shop. And I told him what I do about how I've restored machines and built up my own shop and, and company and everything. So he said, let me go get the head machinist. And he went and he got the head machinist who was a veteran of Vietnam and the person who was in charge of restoring all these machines. Uh, so he and I got to talking and they wound up giving me and a, and a, a small bunch of my you know close friends in the, in the troop a personalized tour. We we went in and we spent probably 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes, all through the machine shop. He was telling us stories and showing us the machines. We could touch them, turn the knobs, turn the handles. Let's just say it was it was a pure delight. So this is a vertical turret lathe. Now that chuck is probably, I'd say around three and a half to maybe four feet wide. Um, right above it, you'll see the tool in, in yellow. That yellow handle is the tool rest and the cross slide mechanism. Pretty huge. Now, feast your eyes on the size of this tailstock. My God, is that massive. Uh, if I remember correctly, I think it's a Pratt & Whitney machine. And the machinist told us that it took two men a half a day to mount the chuck. Now this is a little hard to tell from the picture, but this is a massive Aloris tool post. I mean, really big. 
Now here's a little bit better shot of the size of that chuck. I would put that at anywhere between two and a half to three feet in diameter. Again, it's hard to tell from the pictures, but th this machine is just incredibly huge. And here's a shot of the taper attachment on it. Again, the pictures do it no justice in terms of size. And by way of comparison, we have a little itty bitty teeny weeny Bridgeport mill. <laughs> when no one was looking, I ran the travel fully forward and backwards on the X and Y axis surprisingly in fantastic shape. The ways were pristine. And over here we got a dual uh, surface grinder. Here's a Milwaukee horizontal mill with the universal indexing head on it. Again, this was pretty big and beefy as well. Now you'll see a lathe here in the picture and then one behind it and there's one on the opposite side. Um, I believe all these were Sydney lathes and these were the, you know, although very big, they were more or less, you know, quote unquote, normal size lathes. Now, this pedestal grinder, hands down, is the is the biggest grinder I've ever seen. Uh, the wheels are about two inches wide, and just the overall uh, size of the thing is just massive. Now, here's a familiar face: the Monarch 10 E, a puny mouse compared to the other machines surrounding it. <laughs> Now, I'm not sure exactly what brand this is, but this was a, you guessed it, large drill press. And this is a shot looking back towards the entrance of the machine shop. And this is the front entrance looking back out into the ship. Now, this is the machinist who's in charge of the, uh, the whole shop here on the ship. And you could see he's got his hands on the turret. And it just goes to show you the size comparison of how big the thing is. And right below it, you could see the uh, the little turret tool holder. Now, this was really impressive. This is the stock room, and the guy told us that every piece of metal that you see had to be loaded through this little doorway, this little porthole doorway. And uh, most of the metal that you see here is still from World War II. Now notice the piece of brass that's sitting on the floor. It's next to the hex stock. That's about five inches in diameter, and it's about 10 feet long. So what do you think that cost in today's price? You're happy now? Oh, yeah. It's cool. It's we got a big welding coming up. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. 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 So you can play with the stuff? Just play. Take this. David. Ooh. David, look at this. Look at the size of this tail stuff. Huge. Push it into the yellow box. Look at the fans. Tim would love them. mortars this thing fires 16 inches can you wrap your head around that <sighs> good morning Philadelphia I wish I was out on a bass boat right now ripping it up we're meeting for morning colors all right 
I found this door to be really cool, the way the gears all work together and it just locks the door and take a look at all that brass. Pretty neat. There's David and Kurt and Nick. So these here are the sailors, you know, bed trunk and they, they pull out underneath their mattress and that's a mannequin doing his laundry. So they have it set up to show like what life was like on the boat. Um, he's got his jeans and his looks like a Phillies schedule, some Advil. <laughs> what? Look at that. I'm over here we're in the in the anchor room. Look at all that brass and copper. Analog dials. Shoring lumber, whatever that does. All brass and steel. This is a this is a, a little scam we got going on here. You have to try to drop a coin down into that bucket, and you could try to use science and bring your hand over here and get a position. But as soon as the coin catches the air, it just it goes the way it wants, and that is far, far down. Needless to say, I didn't get it in. Like, whoop, sorry. Keep your head down, son. Boom! So we're looking at the Delaware River now. Philly. There's some ships over there. And I say ships because there's masts. Look at the way this deck just rises up. The bow just goes right up. <clears throat> size it out in order. That's 1,800 pounds or so and that is what's known as a bag of powder and they need six bags of powder to fire that shell 23 miles so they don't see their target. They just fire it and level it. <clears throat> show you the perspective. Basement shop sun. You're literally almost as tall as you and you're almost as tall as me. What do you think, Dave? It's okay. Pretty cool, right? There's the model back there. <laughs> That's Ronald Reagan's flag right there. Any questions? I'm just Shooting a little video, that's all. So we're in the Admiral's quarters now, and he had his own private shower, stainless steel. Nice blue tile. Port John. Phone. Luxury living on a boat. Sorry. Luxury living on a ship. Here's his own personal kitchen. And I don't know what's in here. Just a room. office, sleeping quarters. Yeah, 
this in Mar uh, is this in Mar this ship or no? In Montana. Uh, My son asked the question, how many great men must have sat in that chair? So this is where Ronald Reagan met with the captain and the admiral, and he sat right at this table. I wonder what they talked about. And the president. Again, who Ronald Reagan was. Ronald Reagan sat right there. Probably sat here talking. Right on the corner table. Probably smoking cigarettes. Fine China when the president or special guests come. It's the captain's quarters. Some nice artwork on the wall. I love these, these old speakers. They play Reveille in the morning to wake you up. Look at this, it looks like some kind of a panic Panic button. <laughs> yeah. Captain. I love these little like mannequins they got there. The guy looks like OJ. Yeah. Look, it's the OJ. Complete with Donna Summer A tracks. Not only is this World War II, this is Korea, Vietnam, Beirut. Now turn two, turn two, commence ship's work. Ship is now open for tours, maintain all tour route barriers, direction signs, air conditioning and heating boundaries. Now turn two. We're in the radar room now. There you go, Tim. What do you think of that? We were in the flight simulator over there. Almost threw up. Those are some powerful binoculars. Apparently you can see cars in that little red building. Just sit here and lock the chairs, but something would go here, maybe some binoculars. You just look out for the enemy.
cigarette while you're punching in coordinates. All right, now that is one thick door. Just to give you a little perspective, this is how thick the door is. We need to find the short in the wire. Anybody know where to do that? <laughs> I love all the brass. This is a, a turret. Mannequins. Incredible. I guess they looked out through here. This is all armor. And that is this thick. That's how thick it is. I'm trying to stick my hand in there. Can you just imagine just sitting here? Ba Boom! So they said that the ship fired its last uh, shells in anger in '83, the Beirut conflict. Another turret. Armor. You can see how thick it is. That's how thick it is. 12, 13 inches thick, 14 inches. And we're still ain't to the top. <laughs> so here's a little bit of perspective hanging off the edge here. That is a long way down. And then, still not. Alright, so this is cool. It's a lot of ammo. And it's like a spinning turret. I forgot what they call these things. God, the guys were talking about them all day. Just Gatling guns, battleship style. I'm sure that would shred something into Swiss cheese in a matter of seconds. The Delaware is like glass this morning. Philadelphia. Super rapid bloom off board. Chaff, chafe, whatever. Look at these things. Boom. Alright, there's a compass. And those things are the things that open up and shoot like cruise missiles. Because there they are. I believe that is a exhaust port and more of those guns, those Gatlin guns. Complete with sound effects. And here's another exhaust port. My god, I would love to go up there. They're not letting anybody up there. There's another turret. I think that's like a four inch or a six inch gun. If we go inside there, pretty big.
the support of the U.S. Marine Corps. We also received other actions for her performance in Israel. In addition to an Army Corps Expeditionary Medal and a Naval Expeditionary Medal, she was awarded a Battle Cross, a Credit Award, and a Year, and a Year. Over outstanding service to the Holy Bomb, the U.S. has been here since the christening. It was added to the previously awarded Army Corps Expeditionary Medal. Commissioning Day, 1943. In 1800 pounds. High explosives. That sink in. It's a huge picture. I guess that's like a tomahawk or a cruise missile, I'm not sure. six bags of powder that they would pack for each shell to shoot at 23 miles. 16 inch gun. Jeez. It's really hard to wrap your brain around this stuff. And again, I apologize for the handheld and I'm just kind of spinning around here, but if you were here, you'd kind of understand. It's just crazy. Oh, 
apologize for the little bratty kid meltdown. He didn't get his leg. Couldn't get a picture, so he's melting down. But look at this. This is so cool. That's a lot of people on this ship.